from San Francisco, GameSpot presents The Hot Spot. And now, here's your host master, Rich Gala. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first podcast in the history of GameSpot. I'm Rich Gallup, hosting The Hot Spot. With me today, we have Greg Kasavin, Bob Kaleiko, and Jeff Gersman. How are you doing, fellas? Pretty good. good. Doing good. Cool. This is your weekly wrap-up for all the hot news going on in the gaming industry. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? Sure. Sounds good. Let's go. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, for people that don't know, it has recently been revealed that there is a mini game hidden deep within the bowels of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. It's in the PC version. It's in the PlayStation 2 version. It's probably in the Xbox version. It was unlocked by a modder in Europe. What's going on now, Jeff? Uh, you know, basically, this this hot coffee thing's real crazy. It um, it look what basically in the game you can go on dates, and eventually, if you progress far enough with these ladies, they'll invite you inside. The game, as it shipped, basically doesn't show any sequence. You go inside the house, you hear some some muffled moaning, and you know it's it's kind of implied what's going on. But apparently, at some point, they had plans to actually take you inside the house and show this stuff off. Um, though the characters are kind of fully clothed, it's obviously like a like an unfinished part of the game that they sort of started developing and then said, nah, let's not go in that direction. But all that stuff remained on the disc. So now if you know where to look and can find codes and stuff, you can unlock that stuff and, and uh, get, to, get to it. Greg, it's been getting a lot of publicity in the press. Politicians are getting involved. Is this getting way out of hand? It seems like it is. Uh, I mean, uh, again, it's, people are using it as, as an excuse to talk about you know how video games are clearly the root of all society's problems and uh you know grand theft auto used to get a lot of flack for being too violent now it's uh on on the other other side of society's vices um so it's it's pretty much got it all now the the content itself uh, is questionable and the the situation is more complicated now because uh the the statement issued by rockstar is is that you know they got hacked and this content was basically put into the game but that's been shown uh, to be fairly misleading, actually. It's quite clear that this content uh, was deliberately put into the game, but, uh, you know, as to what it all means, uh, it's still undecided yet, but I think people are kind of sick of hearing about it, and they're and they're decided that l- life's going to have to go on, and this game's been out for months and months already. And right. So will yeah. there be any long-lasting ram- ramifications from this? Is the ESRB going to take some flack for making an M-rated game? Are ratings going to change? Will legislation pass? They're they're taking a lot of flack and there's talk of like government regulation and so forth, but it, it's just hard to see exactly how logistically that would work. And, and I think, if anything, it's just going to cause uh, the ESRB to try to be even more careful and uh, ultimately, you know, as messy as this whole thing is, uh, maybe it's for the best just as far as, like, getting more of this information out there to people. And I, I think anyone who does even a basic level of research about the facts of the matter realizes that it's not necessarily the end of the world and it's not little Johnny, you know, learning how to perpetrate these horrible crimes and, and so forth. Yeah, the the thing with this is... is- you know, having having seen that stuff and and hearing the outcries of like, oh, they need to re-rate this as AO. It's like none of that stuff really looks that dramatic. Like it would need to be a rating change. I mean, look at uh, God of War for the PS2. That's another game that has sexual oriented uh, mini games right there in it, um, including topless women. M rated game, no problem. So this is just a situation where people, I think, got surprised and, and, you know, they're trying to lash out at it. Basically, I, I get the feeling that politicians have been gunning for GTA for so long now that now they finally feel like, oh, we got them. And, and yeah. they're just trying to scapegoat it out. And, and, and uh, you know, elections are coming up, right? It's true. It's <laughs> so true. Someone's got to find hot button issue. To, to so we'll on. give hot coffee a hot this week. I'm sure we'll be talking about it again very soon. EA stock price. Let's move on. It's holding steady in that. They announced that The Godfather is going to be delayed. Stock prices went down. Then they announced that they'll be distributing uh, Half-Life 2, and it went back up. What's going on down in EA, Bob? Well, basically, uh, it's more what's going on in Wall Street. Uh, people are starting to pay uh, a lot. At least people in the, who follow games are starting to pay more attention to the business aspects of it. And uh, so all of a sudden, what used to be somewhat innocuous announcements about a game being pushed back a few months here or there has a uh, you know bigger ramifications beyond you having to wait a few you know, more weeks until you can go buy it in the store. So will this lead to what I believe is Greg's great hope in that the games industry becomes more like the movie industry and in that we get actual firm release dates well in advance? 
Um, I, I think that's definitely what the evidence points to. I mean, you, you've got this clear cause and effect relationship where a release date was announced, the release date slipped, and basically punishment was served up. The The message is, is quite apparent there. It's like, when you announce a release date, you better make it serious. Though in this case, it's also interesting that, I don't know, I think it reinforces... Uh, sort of a negative trend here where uh, which is that like your game has to come out in the fall or holiday release season in order to be a big seller which is ridiculous the year is 12 months long last time i checked and people (laughs) are interested in playing great games any time of the year i mean like this week is a great (laughs) example as to you know kind of the 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 disparate release calendar there are no xbox games shipping this week there are like four games in total coming out this week you know, there could be a big game right now and it would eat up everyone's time because there's nothing else big coming out. So it seems like they could, uh, you know, shake things up a bit with the way games are released and, and maybe get a spotlight on games that yeah. might not get it otherwise. All right, moving on. Microsoft Security. Recently in GameSpot's own forums, uh, a young guy took pictures of him playing his stepdad's Xbox 360 that his dad had to bring home for his job purposes to test. What's going on, guys? Is he <laughs> the first grounded? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, basically that so, that kid's in a lot of trouble, and somebody's fired, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, more or less. So it, it sounds like that kid kind of got uh, freaked out towards the end and actually uh, asked us to remove it from the forums. <laughs> so maybe he uh, realized towards the tail end of that that uh, oh man, what the hell have I done? <laughs> so well, so it's out of the forums, but it is it's every GameSpot news it's and all over the internet. You know, if you're looking for it, yeah. Well, someone had the common decency to to block out the kid's face. The original shots didn't uh, didn't have that, but they didn't block out his hair. <laughs> One boy <laughs> needs a haircut, you? man. That's Whatever, funny. he's still collecting royalties from So I Married an Axe Murderer, I think. Uh, yeah, as long as he keeps the hair. So, <laughs> did we learn anything new about the Xbox 360 from this leak? Um, basically, it, he didn't have any games to try out with it, but uh, he talked a lot about the front end features, and and basically, we learned that this guy thinks they're cool. Okay, <laughs> that's uh, that's more or less. And there's lots of wires hanging out of. Right. Yeah. Presumably, it was doing electrical testing to make his, sure that it doesn't blow up. You know, like like UL testing or, or something like yeah. that. Um, and they're they're making sure that it's not going to catch fire. So there's a bunch of wires hanging out for hooking up different, probably voltage testers. Maybe that explains the hair. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I guess. Yeah. Going on. Yep. All right. Moving on. Majesco's fortunes cold. Their stock price has gone down. Their CEO left town. No one's buying Psychonauts. Advent Rising wasn't as good as they hoped. Man, Majesco is kind of a weird story because they really seemed like they were on the verge of, of turning things around yeah. and kind of, you know, maybe moving up to kind of a next level in the, the video game publisher world. Uh, they had a lot of really exciting games. And at the end of the day, you know, they just didn't pan out and didn't sell for them. So, you know, it, it's kind of a tough break. Tough break because, I mean, Psychonauts is a great game. Um, Advent Rising? Not so great of a game, but, but hey, they you know they gave it the yeah. old college try with that one, and yeah, they I, I definitely agree. They looked like they were on the up and up there for for a while. They picked up a developer Starbreeze to do that game, The Darkness, after right. after Starbreeze did such a great job with the Chronicles of Riddick last year. So they they seemed like they were making really good calls, and and then uh, yeah, things just turned sour, and I guess it's it's just sort of a grim reminder that uh, this is a real high stakes game at this point and you got to got to place some really big bets but there there's just no guarantee that they're going to pay off. Well, here's my here's my question then. It seems like more and more reading the headlines against spot news that we're hearing news on stock prices going up and down. Is this a sign? Is this new to the game industry or is or is stock trading something that all these companies haven't had to deal with before? It's I wouldn't call it new, but it's definitely something that people are taking a, a longer and harder look at. For the simple fact that there's just a lot more money in this business than there used to be, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, what do they keep saying? It's bigger than Hollywood, and yeah. it's bigger and more money than the box office does. Well, it's like wherever there's money like that, there comes increased interest from people that have no interest in the quality of the games. Ultimately, they just are looking at these cold numbers and trying to figure out, you know, where they can make money. So, so a 16 uh, million predicted profit turned into a 16 million dollar you know, loss, all of a sudden your stock price cut in half, executives running away as quick as they can. Maybe they're going to play Psychonauts. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) They should be. Speaking of people heading for the hills, Midway in San Diego, they recently lost John Romero, Mm -hmm. notorious game developer, I will say. Sure. And uh, J.E. Sawyer, 
Who are these guys? Bob, get us started. Why do they leave? What's going on? Well, uh, of course, no one's saying on the record, you know, why exactly they left. But uh, John Romero did, you know, it was learned that he left uh, last week. And then this week, you know, they got, there's um, more bad news for that studio that uh, J.E. Sawyer has also left the same studio. And they were both working on the same project, Gauntlet Seven Sorrows. J.E. Sawyer went back to basically his old mates from uh, Black Isle who were mostly at Obsidian Entertainment. Now he's going to be, you know, developing more uh, more traditional role-playing games as opposed to Gauntlet, which is, uh, you know, much more action-oriented. Yeah, he's on to Neverwinter Nights too. And then Romero's plans, uh, I don't think, have been revealed at this point. Hopefully keeping his hair looking awesome. Uh, <laughs> John Romero's been known for quite some time. He was obviously one of the original creators of Doom. Mm-hmm. But his career has been kind of in flux for several years. Yeah. So this really yeah. isn't that much of a surprise that he's moving on. Am I right? Yeah. Correct. No. It's uh, yeah. John Romero's been been everywhere, done a whole bunch of different stuff, and uh, yeah, not not that big of a surprise. Midway, for their part, has said that the development of Gauntlet won't be impacted by their departure. So maybe their part on the game was already done, or you know, maybe they just didn't like the direction it was moving in, and, and uh, again, quietly left. Uh, it's it's hard to say. Uh, what exactly happened, but uh, yeah, you know, it'll be interesting to see how Gauntlet turns out, I guess. Cool, we'll find out soon enough. I think yeah. it's coming out this fall, right? Yep. As well as every other game currently in development. Except right. Godfather. Except for Godfather. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, as Rothian inflation, very hot right now in the land of World of Warcraft, or I guess I should just say in the world of Warcraft right now, Bob, there's a little bit of cheating going on. What's up? Uh, basically what happened was a duping bug was found in the game. And what that basically means is that uh, people are using shysty means in order to uh, create uh, copies of their, you know, magical swords and, and you know, glinting armor or whatever, and also uh, their money. Mm. And, uh, you know, if you're creating, like, multiple copies of stuff that's supposed to be rare as well as your money, you're basically creating inflation in the economy. And, um, you know, that basically could break the game if, Blizzard doesn't step in and somehow put this in check. So, Jeff, World of Warcraft was GameSpot's game of the year last year. Yep. Very popular, massively multiplayer online role-playing game. Is cheating like this a normal thing in this genre? It's a thing that happens. You know, you always have people that are looking for that little edge, and, and commonly the cheating is that people are out there spending real money for these items, you know, there there are auction sites set up, and you know some of the auctions creep through on eBay where people are selling whole characters, or selling rare items, or just straight up selling gold. So you know, th- all that stuff works to kind of unbalance the economy, probably as the game developers intended it. But something like this has the potential to do a whole lot of damage really fast. So Blizzard really does need to step in, and and presumably when it comes to stuff like this, you know they are they are uh, keeping track of of items to to the level where probably each one has an individual ID number, so that's probably getting duplicated too. Oh. So as soon as they can kind of pour over their data, figure out what went wrong, close the hole in the game, um, then they can start working on you know what they want to do to these people if they want to ban them, if they want to remove all those items from the game. But, of course, some of those items have been sold to unsuspecting honest players. So right. what do you do in that case? Do you punish the honest players too? Do you roll it back so they get their money back? I mean, there's a, a bunch of different options that they have to weigh and consider and uh, try and pick the one that's going to fix the problem while impacting the honest players of the game as minimally as possible. Greg, are you confident Blizzard can fix this problem? Is this going to ruin the game forever? You know, they're, they're no strangers to cheating in their games. Uh, they're... they're probably one of the most experienced companies at dealing with these sorts of messes, though at the same time, this is probably one of the bigger such messes that they've encountered just because World of Warcraft has, uh, what, more than 2 million subscribers now. So when we refer to the game's economy, uh, it's got a real economy that's probably bigger than that of some third world countries. So it it really is kind of a serious problem that that they have to treat uh, very, very carefully. So... um, the the good news is that they they've handled this sort of thing before, but that does, probably doesn't make it any easier to take care of. Well, I think that's going to do it for this week, fellas. Thanks for coming by, Greg, Bob, Jeff. Appreciate it. And you listening, if you want more on the latest news, reviews, previews, hints, guides, and movies from the world of gaming, go to GameSpot.com, and we'll see you back here next week. For more information on these or any other topics relating to the world of gaming, check out GameSpot.com. <laughs>